All right, let's bring in uh, our, our panel now for more analysis on what's happening, especially with the Proud Boys trial. Former Chief Counsel on Senate Intelligence Committee, Victoria Tonsing, who is also a senior Justice Department official. Also with us, former U.S. Attorney for Washington, D.C., Joe DeGenova, also a Chief Counsel on the Senate Rules Committee. Welcome into you both. Uh, we look at Enrique Tarrio's sentencing today. Prosecutors, we heard from Logan right there on the ground, they want 33 years and they know, they say he wasn't on the Capitol that day. They're talking about him unleashing a force that was calculated, they say, to exert his political will. Seems like a pretty hefty sentence there, Joe and Victoria, for someone who wasn't even in the same vicinity. Hey, Bianca, I prosecuted terrorism cases when I was deputy assistant attorney general. This is not terrorism. This is, and he was charged with seditious conspiracy, which just means a conspiracy to overthrow the government. It doesn't call for a terrorism enhancement in any way whatsoever. It's an embarrassment to this Justice Department, but that's in a long line of embarrassing uh, conduct by this Justice Department. Yeah, I think what's happening, though, in that courthouse is this judge, in all likelihood, will not impose a 33-year sentence, but he will impose a lengthy sentence probably in excess of the 18 years that was given to another member of Proud Boys. There is a contagion in the courthouse, and it is that these judges are fearful mm. of being criticized for exercising fairness and judicious restraint. And so I think that the judiciary in D.C., the federal judiciary, has been taken over by the moment. And that's the real tragedy here, is that they're not acting independently. By the way, Bianca, I had a complaint filed against me with the D.C. bar by the 65 Project, and it went nowhere. But you still have to defend it. You have to spend money. And they don't care because for them, the process is the punishment. Exactly. And if you don't have the means to fight back, there they go. They got you there. Uh, and like you and Professor Dershowitz, which also, you know, you can speak to a platform to a lot of folks. So uh, definitely thank you for adding that note to that. Uh, you talked about the other the other Proud Boy uh, with the, the tough sentence there, this terrorism enhancement. But we really need to point out, as you guys so clearly articulated, this is such a sharp, you know, comparison when we're talking about D.C. judges, because 2020, there's a case of a Black Lives Matter rioter goes into a Minneapolis shop, sets it on fire, a man burns to death. That, that person gets 10 years in prison, but the Biden Justice Department, a former acting U.S. attorney, had asked for a light sentence here. So someone's dead, they only get 10 years when they could have got much more. But because they're a BLM rioter, is that some type of dispensation here then? Yes, yes, it is, Bianca. <laughs> or as Merrick Garland said in his confirmation hearings, well, if you assault a courthouse and there's no proceeding going on, it's okay. Believe, yeah. believe it or not, he actually said that. As a former federal judge from the D.C. Circuit, one step below the Supreme Court, he actually said that if there's not a proceeding going on, it's basically okay to assault a courthouse. That is so unbelievably stupid and inane, such a comment coming from a nominee and now the attorney general. Thank God Mitch McConnell kept him from getting on the Supreme Court. Right. Well, you know, Trump's fate may be in the hands of a D.C. jury at some point down the road. So we continue to yes. talk about that. But meantime, I do want to get your reaction to what we may see play out in Georgia. Uh, there was a report today, uh, like Trump, uh, former chief of staff Mark Meadows, waived his right to formal arraignment and, and pl pl pleading not guilty. Uh, so what do you think we'll see uh, to this week down in Fulton County? Obviously, some folks have decided not to show up, which is their right and, and pretty much par for the course what we expect. Yeah, well, Bianca, because that's a nothing burger. I mean, it, arraignment is so perfunctory. Whether you show up or you don't show up, it doesn't matter. And why should Trump show up to get his uh, picture taken again and all the brouhaha that goes along with it? It was the right thing. There's just going to be chaos in Georgia. I don't know. I mean, Joe and I both prosecuted cases for a long time. I've prosecuted many conspiracy cases. I don't know how you split up a conspiracy case by having one and the other. The whole point of conspiracy is that you all work together. And then to have one one person go on trial, uh, like Cheeseboro, uh, in October, and then somebody else go on trial in November, and somebody else go on trial in January, it's it's not legally workable. And she has she has created this monstrosity purpose purposefully to create this dangerous situation to make these very very difficult choices for the judges about whether or not they should sever certain defendants from others. 
But when you have 19 defendants and over 50 defense lawyers, can you imagine trying that case in anything other than a gymnasium? It's the Roman circus all over again. And that's all she cares about. She cares about the publicity because she's running for another office. She's running for governor. And Meadows' case may actually ultimately go to the federal court in Georgia, as we know that judge there asked for more information on the RICO statutes. So that could also uh, put some, um, you know, impact there on Fonnie Willis's, uh, you know, ideal to have them all tried together. Uh, let's get your reaction to this uh, Trump uh, Truth Social post, because, you know, the Democrats are out there trying to push this 14th Amendment, uh, saying, you know, he could be removed from the 2024 ballot. We know he has not been charged with anything that would even, you know, uh, be related to the violence. And Trump is flat out says this is a trick being used by the radical left. He writes the communists, the Marxists, the fascists. And we know that there's some folks out on the legacy media trying to push this and, you know, efforts to keep Trump off the ballot. Is this a trick? And are you concerned if it, it gains weight in some states, Vicki and Joe? Well, Bianca, not only would Trump was charged, he was charged in the impeachment trial with insurrection. And guess what? He was acquitted. So I don't know how anybody can assert the 14th Amendment, which says nobody can hold a federal office if they were a part of a rebellion or insurrection. He was acquitted of insurrection. So, and, and then on top of that, the, I mean, this is such bad uh, constitutional law. There's a supremacy clause. The Secretary of State or the Attorney General of New Hampshire does not get to decide who runs for the presidency of the United States. Victoria and Joe, always a pleasure to have you in there breaking down the legal aspects of all of these important stories. Good to see you both. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.